I am Dr. Momita Rai, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmaceutical Technology, JS University. This is the first class of Pharmacological and Toxicological Screening Methods 1 and the topic name is Common Laboratory Animals. In this subject, the Pharmacological and Toxicological Screening Methods, the details about the animal experimentations will be discussed. This is the main subject of the pharmacology and this is one of the important subject of pharmacology where the different animals, the laboratory experimental animals, the experimental models will be discussed in a brief manner. This is the first topic that is the common laboratory animals in the subject code MPT1083 the pharmacological and toxicological screening methods one so first of all the topics which will be discussed are the brief and main introductory topics like the common laboratory animals and animals used in research these are basic and preliminary topics of the subject so first of all we have to know about what are the different types of experimental research as we all know that in in a brief manner the experimental research can be classified as in vitro in vivo and in silico research so what are the in vivo uh, sorry what are the in vitro research in vitro is the research which are carried on outside the living organism in vitro type of research are carried out outside the living organism in any glassware or any petri plate mainly referred as the in vitro type of research where vitro is a latin word which means glass next is the in vivo in vivo is mainly used for the experiments which are carried on inside the living organism the in vivo experiments which are these experimental animal models these all are considered as the in vivo research experiments which are carried out inside the living organism. Next is in silico. In silico is the research which are carried on based on the computerized software. As there are silicon chips present within the computer, so the computerized software based research are called the in silico research. Like different type of simulated softwares are there these all are considered as the in silico research next is ex vivo so uh, as a whole this this is a similar terminology like the ex vivo and in vitro which both are carried out outside of a living organism but the difference is that ex vivo is refers to a procedure where an organ or cell or tissue are taken outside from the living body for any treatment procedure or experiment and then again return to the living body okay so ex vivo is the procedure where the organ or tissue is uh, is, uh, is made outside from the living body for any treatment or any procedure and experiment then it again replaced to the living body itself okay but in case of the in vitro this is a medical test or experiment which are totally carried out outside the body like in a test tube or a laboratory dish. Next one is the in situ. In situ is this is carried out within the site. This is also similar to the in vivo but the in vivo experiments are when a living organism is totally used. The term is Latin where within the living, in vivo term is within the living organism. Total experiments is carried out within the living organism. But in case of the in situ, this experiment is a laboratory based experiment mainly considered on a specific protein or gene which are looking at inside the entire organism. We are focusing some part of the uh, living organism like any gene or the specific protein inside the organism in latin this is also a latin term where on site or in position that in situ term def uh, defines as on site or in position but in case of the in vivo this is within the living organism this is the basic difference in case of the in vivo the experiment is carried out within the living organism and in case of the in situ the experiment is focusing the site or the position 
of the organism like of a specific site or position of a protein or gene inside the organism so these are uh, two more or less similar term like the in vitro and the ex vivo and in vivo and the in situ but these are some basic differences next why are the animals used in research animals are mainly used for the biomedical experiments for replicating any human disease so why the animals are used in research the main use of animal in experimental research are for the education or research purpose is referred to the animal experimentation this is also called the in vivo experiments or the animal experimentation this is also called the pre clinical trial as we know that after the drug discovery the drug is discovered within a laboratory the chemical or the chemical moiety of the medicine or the drug is synthesized then after formulation development before uh, incorporating these to the human body which is called the clinical trial for the safety and toxicity we first test the compound within the animal these are called the preclinical trials these are some trial phases after the drug discovery first is the preclinical trial then will be the clinical trial then finally the medicine will be marketed okay so in the human trial the clinical trial is divided into four phases phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 and phase 4 is the post marketing surveillance and before these clinical trial the preclinical trial is there which are totally carried out within the animal for the preliminary safety and efficacy if it pass the safety and efficacy then only it will be considered for the human trial so the animal use is the basic of any experiments any non human organism to evaluate the particular biological phenomenon or investigate any human disease is referred to as an animal model and the animals play an inevitable role in experimental research for the safety and of any product before applying to human and the clinical research depends on the data validity of the animal research on the basis of these animal data the safety and efficacy data from the animal the clinical research will be further processed so these are the basis of the use of animal in research now there are different reasons for using animals in research first of all the physiology and genetics of lower group of mammals show a high resemblance to that of the human the uh, hum, the lower group of the mammals are 99% genetically similar as that of the humans so the animals can be considered for the research for the um, specific type of data generation like the physiological and genetical similarity next one human disease can be easily replicated in the animal system or it can be developed within the animal body system as the animals have similar physiology and genetics like the human next is animals having shorter life cycle in comparison to the human so it can be studied throughout their whole life span like for a human the average life span is 75 years and for a suppose for rat it's 2 year so we can extrapolate the whole total 75 years of the human life within the 2 years of the all total rat life span so we can study easily a disease within these rat which can be replicated uh, or can be extrapolated to the human like uh, this is uh, this is a fact that for a 24 hours old rat is considered to be a 6 months old human okay so 24 hours rat is similar to all the physiology or similar to the 6 months old human so you can easily compare like the, this for like one month if we study one disease in a rat for one month then it will be like uh, 30 days if one day is corresponds to the 6 months of a human so 30 days can be corresponds to the 6 into 30 180 months of a human which are near about 15 years so if we can study one month of a disease condition within a an animal body it is similar to study 15 years within a human 
so the shorter life cycle is easy to compare the total life process and the disease uh, within the animal uh, throughout their whole lifespan next animals are easy to handle within the laboratory so these are used for the research purpose and animals have a higher reproductive and litter rate the reproductive rate is higher in case of the lower group of mammals so they can be easily used for the research though there are several ethical considerations which we have to meet first uh, so that carried out the experiment on the animals but due to these higher reproductive and litter rate they can be considered for the research next in case of the animal research the most important thing one principle is there which you should always remember before or during uh, these experimental procedure uh, when whenever you will carry any experiments on animal you have to maintain or you have to remember these three r three word which are starting with the r's these are the principle of three r's in 1959 russell and birch developed the universal guiding principle of these three r's for the ethical use of animals in testing so what are those three r's first is the replacement second one is the reduction and third one is the refinement replacement reduction and refinement these principle of three r's you should always remember during any experiment of these pharmacological procedure replacement replacement is what the methods to avoid or replace use of animals in research with in vitro methods if there is any alternative method of these uh, experiment in vivo experiment then anyone should opt for that like in the graduation we are now not using the animal model for only the demonstration purpose instead of that we are using any model or any software like the simulated software we are using for demonstrator uh, demonstration of the only the system the body system for the demonstration of the body system we are not dissecting any animal there so now these are the replacement of the in vivo experiments but in case of some uh, efficacy or safety efficacy testing of some new compound or the uh, drug development purpose which we have to ultimately uh, imply it to the human to, these are necessary to conduct those uh, safety and efficacy experiment within the animal for the toxicity and efficacy purpose these cannot be replaced but other than these type of research if we have any alternative for any experiment like any in vivo uh, sorry like any in vitro or in silico if any other ways are there so we must opt for that thus we can replace or avoid using the animal second one is the reduction choose some method which employ less number of animals do not use a uh, many much more number of animals unnecessarily manner so there are also some guidelines you will be uh, you will be learn in your later class like the oecd guidelines are there cpc aca guidelines are there where the animal number minimum number of animals are specified some we need some minimum number of animals to make our experiments statistically significant but other than that do not use unnecessarily excess amount of animals so the reduction or reduced number of animals should be used Uh, in any experiment within the animals third one is the refinement we should adopt some method that reduce the pain or suffering or distress of animals during the experimentation always choose some method which will reduce the pain or suffering and distress of the animals during the experiment so these are the basic three principles which we have to remember during our experiments the replacement reduction and the refinement replacement is the uh, alternative for any experiment other than the animal other than using the animal next is reduction try to reduce the number of animal to the minimum one and third one is the refinement use the process which reduce the pain or suffering or distress to the animals other than these three now one another fourth r has been introduced recently which is rehabilitation 
these refers to the after care or the rehabilitation of the animals post experiment after the experiments this is uh, this is a human thing to show the care to the animals who have suffered or they who have sacrificed their life for our benefit who have suffered we have suffered from pain for our benefit we have to show them the care or rehabilitation after the post experiment okay these are the four hours basically have to be considered for doing any animal research next is what are the types of animals we can use for the research first one is the rodents rodents are the mammals uh, in the order rodentia and it can be characterized as a single pair of continuously growing incisor incisor teeth in their upper and lower jaws these are the lower group of mammals which have continuously growing incisor teeth in their upper and lower jaws so they can be classified as the rodents like the mouse rat guinea pig hamsters these are some characteristics that they are having continuously growing incisors in their upper and lower jaws next one is non rodents non rodents are some higher group of animals than the rodent those are the rabbit dog cat monkey pigs these are the non rodents and third one is the miscellaneous these are some frog pigeon zebra fish chicken other than the rodents and non rodents these miscellaneous group of animals can be used for the animal research these are nowadays uh, used in a higher manner like the zebra fish and the pigeon also these are used for specific research purpose and also for some molecular studies the genetical studies the zebra fish are nowadays widely used so how we will select the animal the selection of the animals will based on some different uh, some different important criteria like first one is the genus which have the common characteristics and divided into some subordinate kinds like the ratters the genus ratters is for the rat all rats are covered within these ratters genus then the species you have already learnt in your uh, school that the genus species then the family these type of chronologies so species is the similar individual capable of the exchanging genes or inbred to produce the offspring like ratus ratus or ratus norvegicus these are the similar genus but the species are different ratus ratus and ratus norvegicus then the breed breed is the morphological differences in form or function and therefore they are tend to have external visible okay breed we can identify the breed we can identify some animal by their breed breed are the morphological differences in form or function like between same genus of the same group of dogs same uh, the dogs are the same but their breeds are different like that there are different breeds of dogs and cats and rats the breeds can be different like beagles and mongrels these both are the dog but their breeds are morphologically they are different from one to another then the strains strains are sharing a presumed common ancestry and they have clear physiological difference that are often often internal or visible strain are also some ancestral presume common and have clear physiological difference they can be internally or can be visible these type of uh, like characteristics either may be visible or it may be internal and invisible these are mostly internal these cannot be seen like the morphological differences like the breed breed sorry it cannot be seen like the morphological differences like the breed these are internal and mostly invisible like the vista strain albino rats and the spreg dolly rats these are both the albino white laboratory rats but their strain like the individual physiological difference internally these are different these are called the different strains why these factors have to be uh, considered within our pharmacological experiments these factors are very important why 
because these factors will also affect the pharmacological responses like the species the guinea pig rat these are two different species guinea pigs are more sensitive to histamine than that of the rat and mice similarly histamine contracts the uterus of guinea pig while these are relaxing the rat Alloxin is not producing diabetes mellitus in guinea pig but these are producing diabetes mellitus in case of the rats. So the species variation will also vary the pharmacological responses. Then again with the strain occurrence of hydrolyzing enzyme atropinesterase in serum liver of some genetically determined rabbits are there. They are resistant to atropine but basically the rabbits are used for the study of the atropine. Atropine used pupil dilatation study is continuously ongoing and as a rabbit as an experimental model but the hydrolyzing enzyme atropine esterase in serine liver of some genetically determined rabbits make them resistance to atropine. They will not show the proper result. Then the sensitivity variations are also there. They have also have been noted between different strains of the mice and the ac uh, action of the histamine or insulin the action will also vary according to the strain then the sex or the gender the renal lesions following exposure to chloroform have been observed exclusively in male mice but not in the female mice after chloro uh, after ex exposure to the chloroform the renal lesions are observed in case of the male mice only not the female Female rats are also more sensitive to certain barbiturates than the males. In generally, the females are more sensitive to any drug or more sensitive to any case of adverse drug reaction or toxicity. So, uh, the sexual or gen gender variations are also there which will affect the pharmacological responses. Then, the age. Neonates are more sensitive than the adults to certain drugs. This is a very common thing that children are the more sensitive as their metabolism are not fully developed and also the excretion or elimination rate are also not full properly developed like the human so it may also cause some toxicity so the neonates are more sensitive than our adults to some certain drugs drugs then the morphine is about four times more potent in case of 14 days old rat than the rats who are 28 days old Similarly, the LD50 of newborn rat of phenobarbitone, pentobarbitone is about one third that of the adult rat. LD50 is also lower as in case of the newborn, they are more sensitive. So, LD50 are also lower than the adult rat. Then some factors also are there like these are some environmental or behavioral factor like isolation or group housing the uh, rats or the laboratory animals are very social in generally the animals are very much social so if they are kept in a group their uh, experimental data will also be more specific or uh, also be uh, very much uh, prominent but in case of they are isolated the data may vary because they get depressed they can they as they are very social animal if they are put in a single cage they are isolated these will also affect the results the experimental data the pentobarbitone phenobarbitone is called full hypnosis in case of the isolated mice marked stimulation when animals are grouped as because their nervous system cns is all already depressed in case of these isolation procedure so the pentobarbitone and phenobarbitone will cause full hypnosis then the cardiovascular system more responsive to isoprenoline in solitary house rats compared to the group house rats. Similar manner. Then the season, seasonal variations are also there. Antidiuretic action of vasopressin in rats greater in spring and summer and the variability was least in winter. Then the mice are more resistant to insulin induced convulsion in summer lesser in case of the winter. These are some seasonal, uh, seasonal variations there. The seasonal variations we can see also uh, which will hamper the experimental data. So this is the all about uh, the animals, the experimental animals which we can use for the pharmacological research purpose. 
and these are the basis of the pharmacology to study the action of the drug the basis is the animal model experimental animal model this is just a brief and the introductory lecture which has covered the different type of research then what are the different types of animals that we can use what which factors we should consider during these experimental procedure within the animals and the different factors affecting the pharmacological responses so now the question answer session is there you have to remember some points from today's lecture uh, which will help you to associate the next lectures easily first one is what is in vivo in vitro research and other different types of research like the in vitro in situ ex vivo in silico what are the reasons for using animals in research then what are the commonly used laboratory animals what are the principles of 3 r's this is a very important question last one what are the different factors affecting the pharmacological responses so go through the slides and read these out follow the all questions these are the basic preliminary thing you have to know to know the different animals their uh, experimental models on these animals and the different factors affecting the responses these are very basic thing you have to know these all well so that you can correlate these with your next lectures of this subject okay so read this out and if there is any question then please ask me in the next class okay thank you thank you so much this is all about